Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my reviews of A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors as well as A Nightmare on Elm Street 4 The Dream Master. And uh, I've been meaning to talk about both of these for a while. I, I reviewed the first two at least a couple or a few years ago actually. Um, but for some reason neglected to review uh, probably two of my actual favorites in the series. Um, I do like one of course. Um, two I used to not like so much, but it is pretty decent actually. I actually do like it after rewatching it again, like about a month or two ago. Um, but three, four, and five are probably my favorites in the series, along with one. Um, and I just decided to cut it down to one video just to make it easier to watch. And I plan doing yet another Halloween horror themed video for today, um, which I'll talk more about at the end of the video. But yeah, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and 4 came out at some pretty high times for uh, slasher, you know, horror movies in general in the 80s. I mean, 3 came out in 87, 4 was in 88, um, ironically the same years as two other horror movies I talked about recently, like uh, um, uh, Hellraiser and Pumpkinhead. And I, I gotta say, uh... <laughs> I really, really like these movies. Uh, part 3 is seen as the most like critically acclaimed of the series, along with the first one. Um, but 4, I sort of have a personal attachment to now, just because of uh, going to that flashback horror convention in Chicago back in August, and you know, meeting Robert Englund and everything. Um, they had that uh, outdoor screening of Part 4, you know, The Dream Master, which was just uh, great. <laughs> um, so because I got to see the film like that, I probably do have some extra attachment to it. Um, but both of them are really good. I do enjoy them both. Um, with Dream Warriors, I think it actually has the best uh, premise of the series. Um, you know, the whole institution thing, I thought it was really good. There were people with different uh, mental issues that are tied into like some kind of Freddy Krueger type of situation. I think it's really good. Um, and then, of course, with uh, Heather Langenkamp returning as Nancy, I think it's great seeing her uh, a little more grown. She's progressed into someone who tries to help people with things like this, so that's really good uh, you know, growth for her character. Um, Lord, young Lawrence Fishburne is also in this as one of the, uh, you know, workers there who actually treats, uh, you know, them pretty decently. And, uh, the rest of the cast all around is pretty fine, too. You know, pretty solid. You have Patricia Arquette as Kristen Parker. She's sort of our, pro like, one of our three protagonists in the movie, along with Nancy, of course, but also, uh, Craig Wazin's, uh, Neil Gordon. Um... We do see Kristen in part four, and honestly, I actually prefer Tuesday Night in part four to Patricia Arquette in this one. Um, I know Patricia Arquette's a bigger actress, but she's a little bit dull for me sometimes. But luckily, we have Nancy there. You know, of course, Southern Lane Camp's great. I wish I had enough money to meet her in August as well, but I kind of had to pick and choose. Um, I did sit down one of the panels she was part of, though, which is you know, really good as well. Um, then as far as uh, Craig Watson's uh, Dr. Neil Gordon, I thought he was fine as well. Um, some of the comments he makes about with the, uh, the inmate, I don't want to say inmates, but what uh, the patient, patients, yeah, what the patients are uh, going through, it's a little bit off sometimes, but you do root for the guy, you know, he's an, he's an alright protagonist, I guess. Um, you also have John Saxon, you know, returning as, you know, Donald Thompson, you know, Nancy's father, which I thought, it, which I think is one of the best parts of the movie, other than, of course, uh, the man of our dreams himself. Um, so we get that dynamic brought back between Nancy and Donald, um, which is great. You know, John Saxon does a very solid job. You know, he's a uh, drunk now ever since what happened to uh, their mother and, you know, his relationship with Nancy because of it. Um, not their mother, Nancy's mother, you know, her, his wife. <laughs> um, and like I said, the, one of the best parts of, uh, Dream Warriors is, you know, the premise of Dream Warriors and the asylum, um, or the institution, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, because we see them, they all have these, uh, gifts in the dream world, and it's different, it's a different thing for Freddy to go up, to go up against, you know, not just teens in the dreams all the time. Um, actually have a chance to fight back here. Uh, meanwhile, we get some hints about Freddy's origins, um, you know, tied to his mother, you know, we see the nun, you know, Neil sees the nun at various times, which I actually found to be interesting in the series, even in, uh, 
you know, four, five, and even uh, six. Um, so I like that part of it as well. And you do get attached to some of them for sure, you know, not, you know, hardly any of them make it out actually. Uh, but, you know, they are fun characters, I think. Uh, you know, Kincaid seems to be pretty memorable among the community. Um, as well as, uh, I forget his name exactly, but sort of the nerd with the glasses. You know, he's really into, like, uh, wizards and stuff like that. You know, like World of Warcraft type stuff. Um, he's fun as well. You guys use his wizard powers on Freddy. He ends up getting impaled, <laughs> you know, by Freddy's gloves against the wall. But still, good effort. <laughs> And there's a lot of great kills in this movie as well. You have arguably one of the most memorable of the series. I'm just going to turn the music down a little. <laughs> um, you have argu arguably some of the most memorable of the series. Uh, you know, with, Welcome to prime time, bitch! <laughs> um, and he just slams the girl through the TV. Uh, it's great. And then, of course, Lawrence Fishburne's character finds her. Um, I also like... Uh, the one where you, like the, I forget if it's like the, what am I, what am I calling it right now? <laughs> Not the nerves, all the, the tendons, yeah, I should say. You know, you have them pulled out of the guy and he's just walking, sleepwalking, and then he walks him right off the uh, building, and you see that shot of Freddy, like, in the sky watching him laughing. It's a great looking shot. I love that. Uh, but you do feel bad for the guy as well, but... You know, we're watching these movies for Freddy Robert England, and he is just at the top of his game in Dream Warriors. Um, he always tries to have as much fun as he can with it. You know, he loves the character. He appreciates the whole fan base. Um, I always thought very highly of him after reading his book, but meeting him was a great experience. You know, hearing him at the uh, screening, they did a little discussion before they played the movie. Um, you know, in my opinion, he's like the hardest working of... You know, like our big slasher actors, I think. And uh, you may know, we'll talk more about that in a, my video later, which I'll give more information about in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I love Dream Warriors. And if I had to rate it, I'd rate it a B plus. I might even nudge it to an A minus. Um, you know, I know it's not perfect. You know, some things, some parts of it, you know, work better than others. I guess. You know, it's, and like I said, I'm not a big Patricia Arquette fan in this one. Um, but it's definitely enjoyable, and seeing Nancy's death was definitely hard to watch. You know, she sees her father, you know, after he is killed, and then she is, uh, stabbed by Freddy. Um, you know, it is a blow, for sure. Um, but yeah, as far as the, as far as the Dream Master goes, I'm not going to talk, uh, too much longer. Um, just because I don't want to make the video overly long. Like I said, I do have a personal attachment to that one. Just to seeing that outdoor screening and seeing uh, Robert as well as the whole cast talk about it. it was a really great experience. Tuesday night singing, which was so on point. Um, like I said, I really like Tuesday night in this one. I think she made a better Kristen than uh, Patricia Arquette did personally. Um, and I, I kind of wish she was our main protagonist throughout the next couple movies instead of uh, Lisa Wilcox's Alice, who I thought was fine too, but I just really liked uh, Tuesday night. And I'm kind of kidding myself for not getting her, you know, signature while I was there. Um, but, you know, I just felt like she had more life as the character than what Patricia Arquette did. She brought more energy to it. Um, there's a lot of other, uh, likable characters in this movie. You have, uh, Danny Hassel as, uh, Dan. He's sort of, uh, Alice's love interest in the movie. Like I said, he's likable. You have, uh... Andre Andres uh, Jones as Rick Johnson. You know, he's Alice's brother. He, he likes, you know, kung fu and stuff like that. He's a, He was actually really likable in his whole uh, scene of fighting uh, Freddy's glove, you know, that was floating around. I actually think it's pretty fun. And it was unfortunate he died as well. Um, and you even have uh, Alice's father, which is an interesting dynamic, you know. Uh, it is unfortunate that we see, uh, you know, Kincaid and, you know, the others, as well as, uh, you know, Joey, you know, killed at the beginning of the film, along with Kristen. Um, but I felt like that was a realistic result. Eventually, Freddy would return. He wanted to just let what happened in Part 3 go, for sure, so he does kill them. Um, and he also have the, uh, cockroach till, uh, kill, excuse me. Um... You know, Debbie, she's uh, sort of a fitness freak, and, oh, 
Oh, wait, wait. Am I thinking the right thing right now? I just want to be sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I might be thinking of the... No, hold on. I just want to be sure I'm remembering this kill correctly. Yeah, okay, that's it. Good. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> I don't have to feel ashamed. But yeah, the Debbie kill, I think it might be the best in the movie. Um, although I do like the beach sequence with Kristen. Uh, oh yeah, the soundtrack is also great in this one. The whole Nightmare series had a pretty good soundtrack, but I think this one's really on point. And like I said, uh, you know, Tuesday night performing it at the convention, you know, before the screening was great. Um, but yeah, anyway, the Debbie kill, you know, she turns into a cockroach, you know, after Freddy pushes the barbell, you know, down, you know, just uh, snapping her arms, you know, the effects are solid, you know, you can tell they're not real, of course, at this point, but it's still a pretty, uh, cool, uh, death scene, I think, like, crushes her as a cockroach, um, so that's great, <laughs> um, then you sort of have, like, this, uh, Groundhog Day sequence with, uh, Alice and, you know, Dan trying to get away, um, and they do survive, and one of my favorite little little moments in the movie is when uh, you know they're at, they're uh, you know they survive they're at the fountain and then you see Freddy's reflection you know just of course teasing that he will return which we all know then you hear that little uh, bit of the music that this. Yeah, that exact, that exact beats the music right there, it's great. Um, that's probably one of my favorite subtle little endings, yeah, I think. So, uh, yeah. Um, and also I should talk about, yeah, Toy Newark. Troy, uh, ugh, excuse me, Toy Newkirk um, as Sheila. I actually thought she was really likable as well. I would have preferred her as the main protagonist to Alice. Again, I don't have much of a problem with Lisa Wilcox. Um, I just really like Kristen and uh, Sheila more in the film. Um, you know, she's sort of the nerd, but she's one of Alice's friends. You know, she has asthma issues. Um, and it's surprising to see her killed off sort of like partway through the movie. Uh, because a lot of times, you know, stories have tried to like build them up as being the strongest, but they kill her here. Freddy sucks her face, you know, in one of the dream sequences in the school, literally. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, it's a little disheartening to see her die like that, because she was like one of the genuinely, genuinely good people in the movie. Um, but yeah, uh, Dream Master. I rated Dream Warriors B+, A-. minus. I'm gonna go about the same range for this, except maybe more along the lines of a B, B+, for Dream Master. So, uh, yeah, let me know guys thought about Nightmare on Street 3, Dream Warriors, and Nightmare on Street 4, The Dream Master. We'll have one more Halloween horror movie related video coming at some point, um, either late tonight or tomorrow, but like I said in my Saw 3 review, I'm going to be continuing doing these Halloween horror movie reviews forever. <laughs> um, I just got really in the mood for it for you know, the month of October, and it just reminded me that I need to bring focus back to horror films on my channel, because that's one of my main passions. Horror films, movies in general sometimes, <laughs> um, and uh, TV shows of course. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. You better stay awake. And of course, having that uh, Elm Street Part 1 you know, mini poster signed by Robert was fantastic.